now i'm going to share my screen let me know once it is visible yes it's visible okay okay so this are the topics which i am going to cover uh, basically a uh, few topics are not mentioned so but do not worry i will be covering that so let's start so before i start let's know what is application packaging so application packaging is something which is developed by the developer developer develops the package uh, the we can also called it as a setup file or source file or a binary file so they develop the application they provide it to the uh, companies different companies have different manufacturers and they provide it to them and accordingly we as a packager we are what we are doing is repackaging we also called it as reengineering so we are modifying that application as per the customer requirements the requirement of the customer can vary from uh, many requirements are there so we have to meet all that requirement as per the customer requirement and we have to modify the application so that the application can get installed uninstall repair we can remove it without any user interface mode so it will be like complete silent we have to deliver the application to the user as per the requirement which they have stated so that is what is called as application packaging so uh, like if somebody ask in a simple language what job you people are doing so many people ask us what job you are doing what is application packaging because people are not aware of what is windows application packaging so you can explain it in a such a way that uh, like we have many applications in our mobile so same way whatever the applications which we are operating in a in a windows system that is something which is redeveloped by us we are not developing it but we are redeveloping it like the application like we have a chrome we have excel we have a powerpoint we have edge so all that thing we are developing it but then the second question can be what you are redeveloping it so redeveloping in the sense we are doing many customizations so few customizations i will be showing you first so uh, whatever the applications which we get which we installed it that is visible in the control panel how you are going to uh, see that application via control panel you can just open control panel or there is a short term which is appwis.cpl so via that also you can open it and you can view what an all application is installed in your machine so i have opened appwis.cpl it has opened the control panel program and program features you can see that many applications it is already installed in my machine so what and all we can customize being a packager uh, for an example uh, we are taking this 7 zip so 7 zip version is mentioned architecture is mentioned we have a date we have a size we have a publisher we have a version so as a requirement the requirement can be that we have to remove this uninstall button that button should not be visible to the customer because they can itself remove it if they have an admin rights so we know that when we install any application we can uh, we may require an admin rights so or we may do not require an admin rights so if the application gets installed in a user context in a user context in the sense that uh, it is particularly getting uh, all the files installed in the user profile like app data local app data roaming so in that case admin rights is not required so if it is getting installed in the machine context which is program file program files 86 or program data then in that case uh, admin right is required so it is always uh, 
always suggested almost in all the organization that we have to remove this uninstall button so there are other three buttons also uh, along with uninstall for an example i'll show you orca we have an uninstall we have a change we have a repair so there are three buttons basically now it depends upon organization to organization that what they want to suppress for few organization it is something like we have to suppress all three for few organization it is something that we want to keep repair and the rest uninstall and change we have want to suppress it so if that is the requirement then we have to uh suppress it how we are going to suppress it there are many ways through which we can suppress it uh there are there is a registry through that we can do it then we have a admin studio tool uh, uh, part of admin studio is an install shell wherein we create a transform through that also we can suppress it so when we are going via practical lab then i would be explaining you how you can suppress this so we can suppress all these three then we can also modify with the name if it is the requirement of your organization or or your organization has a standard to uh, modify the name mostly it is not suggested to modify because sometimes for few application the functionality get disrupted but i have also worked in one of the organization wherein they says that we have to change the display name and they had some different format to keep the display name so therein we used to modify it and along with that if you see if i have clicked on the filezilla there are many such below tabs the help link is there the support link is there the update information is there all this we have to delete it so we do not keep any such information which is related to the vendor we have to delete such particular things because if you are packaging any application then you have become the owner of that particular application so we have to delete any such support type of information or contact name number of any particular application uh, vendor they have provided we have to delete it this also we can delete it via registry if it is a exe application and if it is a transform which is msi mst then via uh, install shield tool we can delete it see for mozilla also we have help link we have support link we have update information so all that information which has a https link or which has a contact number that we have to delete it along with that what modification we do as an application packager we uh, remove the desktop shortcut so this two thing is the basic thing which we perform for almost all the application for all the organization there is a standard that we cannot keep the shortcut in the desktop we have to remove the desktop shortcut we can keep it until unless there is a proper business justification which is mentioned in the prf document which is the package request form if they mention it we want to keep it and they give a proper justification why they want to keep it then only we can keep the desktop shortcut otherwise we have to remove it so we can say modifying the you can yes. i ask question yes yes please please uh, you were discussing about user based install and machine based install right so yes right wait, please uh, going forward clear the difference of both of these because where user based you were saying that app data and all those things and for machine based the files will go to program files or program files 86 so you will be discussing all those things right yes 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 i will be so this question i think it is asked from rashika yes i have asked yeah. okay so basically rashika uh, when we install any application let me show you so uh, whenever we install any application it gets installed either in program files like you can see filezilla is there right or it get installs in program files 86 and the third thing is program data but many uh, it's it's like minimum 
uh, like it gets installed in program data it is very less if it gets in uh, installed in program data it is not uh, suggested to keep it uh, they say that we have to change the directory we have to move the directory to program files or we have to move the directory to program files 86 until unless uh, the functionality is disrupted so there is an application name as anaconda which gets installed in program data uh, that is the application which gets installed both as a user context also as a system context also so this is something whatever is there in the c drive that is a system context that can be viewed by every users who has logged into your machine like if you are using any desktop or if you're any using any system in your company and that system is getting used by multiple users so they would be able to see all this so that is why it is referred as machine context which is visible to every users who has logged into that system then we have C users. So if I go to C users, you can see that there are a few profiles it would have been created if it is your organization machine. If you see this, like for me, my username is trainer. So for you, if uh, your username is Shreya, uh, then uh, like if other username is Rashika or if other name is username is uh, Nimu, so there will be three profile created in users. And you would be able to see only your profile. You wouldn't be able to, the name will be visible, but when you double click on it, and if you try to go inside that particular folder, you would not be able to go because uh, you do not have an admin rights to enter to that. Even if you have admin rights, still you cannot enter any other person's user's profile. So that is something which is uh, referred to as a user context. So that application will be available only for you. It would not be available for any other users who are using that system. Okay, so if you see, uh, there are few uh, folders which are created like Anaconda is there, Conda is there. So there are few such applications which particularly get installed in user profile. Then for that also we have a different mode of packaging, which I will be explaining uh, when we will go one by one. Otherwise it will be confusing for you. Yeah, yeah, we can go slowly. Hmm. So that is what basically we are doing as an application packaging, uh, as an application packager, which is a standard of all the almost all the organizations. Now we will discuss about the types of source file. So mostly we have only three types of source file. Okay, so the first is exe, which we called it as executable files, or we called it as legacy installer. The second is MSI which is Microsoft Windows installer. And then third is loose files. So basically when you get any such request, you are going to get any of this source file. Loose files are very less. We get hardly such request for the loose files. Mostly what we get is exe and MSI. So you will get a setup file which will be having an extension of .exe or which will be having an extension of .msi. And the loose file is something which will not have any extension. It will be in the form of loose files. So let me show you add-ins and plugins are also as a source add-in or plugin is not a source file it will be something in the form of exe or msi only so that exe will be only getting installed and that will be giving you the add-ins it is not a type of source file source files are only three types of source file so uh this is an exe if you see for all this application you would be able to see all application have an extension of dot exe so this is what is referred to as an exe application this is an msi if you see dot msi is an extension so i will show you few msi also so this all are dot msi then we have a loose file so loose file how it will be like it will be a folder will be there 
and then it will be having many files so it will be a comprises of many such other extinction of file so this whole thing we called it as a loose file so if you see this particular application this is an application named as pac 2021 so if you see this has an exe so but don't get confused this exe will not allow you to install an application this exe will just launch a shortcut exe or msi source file should be such a, in a such a way that it will install a few set up few set of files and folders in your system then it is an application if i launch if i click on this exe file it will not install any application rather it will launch a shortcut so that is the desktop that is the uh, loose file application so what we have to do we have to capture such applications so if you see this it has launched a shortcut it has not installed if i will see it in the arp entry i would not be able to see this application because it has not installed and our work is to install an application to the user so we have to see how we are going to package this application you can either do it via script also now it depends upon your organization that uh, what they are following because capture is a process which is a very huge process so many organization they do not refer to it few organization have a standard of capturing few organization has a standard just just create a psadd copy that particular loose shortcut in the start menu and give it to the user so that is the simplest way that we can do it and the second thing is the capture we can do it which is a huge process and that requires a lot of time so it now at the end depends upon your organization that what is the standard of your organization so that is all about the uh, types of source file then uh, uh any one of you uh, i think nimu will be knowing uh, do you know uh, rasika that where the shortcuts are there in our system do you know the location mm -hmm. no i don't remember maybe in this okay so i'll show you so whatever the shortcuts first of all we can see it from here right but there is particular location where all this shortcut would have kept and that is an important thing to know it because it can be a interview question also in a simple way uh, they can ask you the location because many people doesn't remember it's little huge so they do not remember it and the second thing a uh, few organization has a standard that what they do it in the start menu they create a particular folder for that shortcut and in that particular folder they keep the shortcut so in that case also it is important and the other thing is uh, there are few other shortcut also gets created with one application it is not something that only one shortcut gets created there can be a multiple shortcuts created so we have to judge that which shortcut is a, a main shortcut and the other shortcuts are to be given to the user or not so this is also one of the standard wherein they say that if a shortcut has an uninstall file we have to remove that if a shortcut has any help link file we have to remove that if a shortcut has a documentation type of thing then that that also we have to remove it so that is the reason we should remember the path of the shortcut so it is c program data microsoft windows start menu programs so if you see uh, for few application uh, the shortcut is there inside the uh, folder for few it is placed outside so if your organization has a standard for an example i can see that for firefox we have a two shortcuts one is the firefox other is some private browsing they want both the shortcut to be placed in one particular folder so you can create one folder here place both the shortcut and that moment you can do it via script so this all thing whatever we are doing it manually that is something we have to develop it via scripting so for an example if i show you 7zip we have two shortcut for 7zip one is the 7zip file manager and the second is 7zip help so if i open the 7zip file manager this is something which when we use it to ex extract any application or to zip any application so this is obviously an important shortcut which is required but help 
help is something which is related to the help link file or the support link so it is giving an information of a vendor we do not want to give any such information to the customer because if they click on this website or if they click on this support it goes to a chrome and they would be knowing about the application and all that so this is something which is a requirement that we have to delete it so this is also done via script if it is an exe application and if it is an uh, msi application then via install shield we have a tool in install shield via that we can remove it so this is the location of start menu shortcut Okay, the second important thing now uh, I told you people that we have a type of source file one is the exe other is the msi other is the loose file but this particular slide this is very very important uh, because this is something will be helpful when you are doing it packaging it will come in a every stage of packaging so you should have a good knowledge of this so and try to understand it if you have any question then please go ahead and ask so first i will be talking about an exe application so the first source file which we get mostly is the exe or the msi uh, so if i talk about exe exe application is such a way that we do not have any tool to create it we cannot open an exe application via any tool and know that what and all files and folders are there so this is something which is a disadvantage also and there are many such disadvantage of having an exe application so when we are doing a packaging of an exe application first of all we have to see if that application is extracting msi or not so there are few exe application for an example we have a power bi desktop application if you download it you will get an exe application but when you extract it you will get an msi so the extraction doesn't work like you can do it via 7-zip or you can do it via WinZip. No, it is a different way of doing it. So it is something uh, I will tell you in the practical lab. I will show you also how we are going to extract, how you can know that where it is getting extracted. So you have to install that application and in particular one folder, that application will extract an MSI there is a way to see that where it is extracting that is covered in another slide that i will discuss later so if it is extracting an msi you have to pick that msi you have to take another test system and then in one machine you have to install exe in another machine you have to install msi and you have to compare both the application whether the application has a same functionality or not how you're going to check the functionality it is something like you have to launch the shortcut you have to see whatever the activity you are doing it via exe the same thing it is working in a msi or not the interface of the shortcut is same or not the numbers of files and folders which is getting installed in the c program files or c program files 86 that is similar or not so that is how we are going to judge that whether it is extracting an msi and that has the same functionality if the application has the same functionality then what you are going to do you are going to pick that msi because msi has many advantages as compared to exe so you are going to pick that msi and then you are going to create a transform for that so for an msi we have a table which is an admin studio install shield so admin studio is the manufacturer and install shield is a part of that tool so we have many other part also of that tool one is the install shield one is the repackager the other is the application compatibility testing which is known as act so what we use as a packager is the install shield and repackager for an install shield we create a transform like msi to mst microsoft windows transform we created the repackager is 
which i said we have to capture an application that is the part of a repackager and act we used to use for an app v application which we are not using it as of now but you should know that we have an act also which is application compatibility testing so if it has extracted an msi then create an mst via install shield table while install shield tool and give that msi mst to the customer the second thing is if exe is not extracting an msi first is if the functionality is same then obviously you're going to pick mostly for uh, i'll say 90 percent the functionality will be same and you have to pick that msi only and you have to deliver it to the customer with that msi mst if exe is not extracting an msi then what you have to do if ex is not extracting an msi then we have to search the silent keys so there are few methods through which you can search the silent keys and you can know that how we are going to install the application silently so that user doesn't see any user interface mode and then you have to implement that uh, installation of that application via silently via any of the script which your organization is currently using it so that is the second way the third way is if exe is not extracting an msi and exe does not have a silent parameter so both of the condition does not met then the third thing is the capture process which is a big process what we are doing it here we are using a admin studio repackager tool here we are capturing the application so capturing an application in the in the sense we are going to convert that exe file to msi so there is a way that with that particular tool which is a repackager tool you are going to convert that setup file extension from an exe to an msi so that steps involve many other steps little huge process little uh, complicated as compared to the other but yes we can get an msi file so that is the thing which we do it uh, the other types of source file is the msi which i already told for an msi if you get it is very easy create a transform give it to the customer that's it if the requirement of uh, uh, script is there then create the script if the requirement is not there then you can simply uh, deploy that msi mst via your sccm tool or via your intune tool and you can directly give it to the customer now the loose file is something i told already for the loose file also it is the same process which we follow for the capture process so it is the same process with the loose file we create a msi extension one way that you can do second way is you can also do it via scripting which is very easier way to do it now it depends upon your organization how you are following it and it depends upon you also because sometimes organization says that whatever you find it easy you can do it in a that way so you can also see that which thing is different uh, which thing is easier for you and in that way you can do it so that is all about the types of binary source file any question please go ahead and ask yeah um sure that means uh, you are saying whatever the case is where the file is loose by or the file is exe or the msi there are three methods incorporated so if we are getting the exe file and if it is extracting the msi the first thing is to create the transform right hmm. and uh, if uh, we are saying exe is not extracting the msi and if it has the silent keys then we have to create the script uh, yes and we have to first find the silent file that is another topic uh, which i will cover once you have created the uh, once you have found the silent key then with that uh, silent key and that exe file you have to incorporate it via script uh, and yes. then you have to give it because there are many things for an exe application which we have to do it like i showed it for you uh, for a 7zip or for a filezilla application so we have to suppress the arp entry we have to remove the desktop shortcut we have to remove the help link support link support information all that we have to incorporate via script because msi you can open it via tool which i told install shield everything you can do it inside the tool just save it and that will be replicated in the mst which you are creating but for an exe we do not have any such options you have to do it via script okay got it okay and yeah. there is one more catch here if 
like exe uh, is not extracting msi exe does not have a silent key the mm. third thing we go to capture but capture also has a limitation if your application is very huge in size like more than 1 gb or 2 gb it is not suggested to take a capture because more a uh, huge size more complications to do it because it captures too much of junk files it captures too much of re uh, junk registries time is time will be very longer and it is not suggested to do it in that case for an example if you get a 4 gb of application if you get a 10 gb of application and that is an exe application you are unable to do it via silent way or unable to do it via uh, like uh, extracting msi then in that case you have to suggest it to your uh, organization that we are going to do it via manual so that is that is at the end you have to do it like nothing is found you gave proper justification we searched this is like um, means you can get it uh, once in a lifetime that you can encounter such application that you you are not going to get anything so in that case is the manual package what uh, we have to do it in a manual package it is not complicated it is very simple that you have to create a document in that document you have to just paste the uh, uh, paste the screenshot of the application how it is getting installed and what and all uh, steps you have to select like whether it it has to be installed in c program files whatever the step is there that you have to put it in the uh, document and then that document has to be passed to the uh, um, means like to the users to check whether that is fine or not and once that is done obviously user will not be having the admin rights to do it so the a uh, local engineer for that particular uh, place where that application they are using that local engineer will come to their play come to their system and they will do the installation by following the steps which you have mentioned in the manual document so that is how we do it for the for few applications we create a manual application because we do not have any other options to do it uh, so uh, the capture what you are saying that is similar setup capture right yes setup capture Thank you. Uh, so I have one question. In between, you were talking about something like ACT, no? Hmm. Uh, what was that actually? Okay. So basically, um, Animu, if you would have remember, have you worked in AppV four point six? Yeah, I worked. Uh, so I, did I you use the ACT for uh, not regarding AppV to suppress uh, UAC prompt or something. No, no, no. I have used that is uh, for migration. We use it. ACT. Okay. Uh -huh. So basically, uh, I, if I talk about it, it is something like around eight to nine years before when we were in migration. So what is migration? Like we now are moving from Windows 10 to Windows 11, right? So yeah. same way at that time we were moving from AppV 4.6 to AppV 5.0 or AppV 5.1. So mm. what we are, what we were doing it, we were uh, doing the testing of that particular app v4.6 to check whether that particular application will work in an app v5.1 environment or not so act is application compatibility testing so we check whether that application is compatible to the app v5.1 environment or not that app v4.6 so uh, that tool used to help us with that it used to indicate via three particular colors it was yellow amber uh, uh, sorry yellow is the amber then green and then red so if uh, like you are testing the application via that tool if it used to come amber like uh, uh, yellow color then this means that you can migrate that application to fv 5.1 by doing few changes like few things we have to change but the possibility is there if it comes green, this means that you can easily uh, move the application to AppV 5.1. It will work. If it comes red, this means that AppV 4.6 application cannot be used in AppV 5.1. So red means completely no. Green, green signal, like we know, na, green signal, it means completely yes. And yellow means that after few changes, you can use it. 
so there were many other such tools also which we used at that time there was some more uh, i as much as i remember it was a dna application so even i did it i think when i was around 2 or 3 years or of experience so at that time we do, did this migration when the app we was moving from 4.6 to 5.1 Yeah, but nowadays FB is no more, and as well as VB script is gone. Uh, so. VB script. Uh. some organizations are using but uh, yeah i have uh, seen a uh, few advertisement or few uh, such uh, researched that in 2026 or something that is there i think i have added in the presentation also that it is about to get removed completely our organization is not using it vbs uh, but few organizations are still using around 10 to 20% because many people does not have a knowledge of psedt so obviously they take time to move from uh, one like it is migration only we can say from from like av to 4.6 to 5.1 same way from vbs to psedt or from vbs to partial so that does take a lot of time so few organization are there in such a stage that they are moving it like people are moving from sccm to intune so many organizations i have seen that they are moving from ssm to intune completely few organizations are still using ssm but obviously if intune has come into the market mostly ssm will go but obviously ssm has many advantages like reporting and all which is there in ssm which is not there in intune as of now until unless that is developed by a via microsoft for an intune i don't think so ssm will go but yes obviously by one by one phase one tool goes on and the later the second theme come before admin studio few organizations were using vi studio uh, which uh, has a publisher of semantic that is also gone out of the market so people were using white studio now people have moved to admin studio so admin studio is something which most of the organizations are using but few organizations are also using some other tools like advanced installer is there uh, then there are many such other tools also still they are using it but as i found admin studio as an easier okay so i told you about act because obviously you people should have knowledge that what was there in the past because you people are not a uh, one year or two years experience that they will not ask you it is something like for nemo it is 9 years of experience so uh, before 9 years if i see obviously app we was there so they can ask what is act how can you indicate this red amber and green part they can ask you so at least knowledge you should have so that you can give it in the interview and at least they will know okay you have worked whether you have worked or not worked they, they are not going to do su such research or they are not going to go peep in uh, that part but yeah little bit of outer knowledge you people should have okay so what next uh let me tell you more about admin studio how it looks i'll show you so this is uh, basically uh, flexera admin studio so admin studio automates application preparation to identify and correct application packaging challenges via direct integration with leading endpoint management tools manufacturer of admin studio is flexera and this is a license tool obviously its cost is very high uh, organizations are using basically professional and enterprise we have three mode enterprise professional and standard every uh, edition have a uh, some uh, difference between all the three so most of the organizations are using enterprise and professional if you see the screenshot uh, nimbu you can see application compatibility first is there that is a test for application so that three signs are there red amber green so that is what through which it used to give the light uh, color particular the circle with the color okay this is red this is amber this is green so that is how we used to do it and we used to know that okay how we can know that whether that application can be migrated or not so uh, as i said we used to use vice package studio so there can be an interview question wherein they can ask you what's the difference between vice package studio and admin studio and why do we move to admin studio when we were already having a vice package studio so we should know the difference uh, first is the if i talk about the publisher admin studio uh, publisher is 
um, Flexera and Vice Package Studio publisher is Symantec. So WPS, also known as Vice Package Studio, it used to require a connectivity. So we used to have a backend connectivity, and then only we used to use uh, this w, uh, WPS. So WPS requires SQL Server or Express for its backend functionality and ODBC lookup, such is not case with Admin Studio. Admin Studio is a standalone application capable of doing that by all itself. Also, WPS does not natively understand the difference between the 64-bit and the 32-bit applications. So that has an issue with an Admin Studio, but now it has created an environment where it automatically can understand so admin studio can understand but wps uh, doesn't used to understand wps is history now that semantic has discontinued it admin studio is now new sheriff in town wps gui is good i have seen wps uh, long back uh, it is has a similar type of uh, ui only just that the connectivity is required if they say the wps gui is good i will not say that the admin studio gui is not good i find it very good uh, maybe i am working for last 10 to 12 years i have a knowledge maybe that is the reason but it is very easier to know that how and what type of tables we have how we can view the things so when you have an experience obviously i find as compared to we have an orca also like uh, we create an mst so we can create it via orca orca is a complete free tool but when i compare orca and admin studio though i have a uh, i have an experience in both orca also and admin studio also but still i found admin studio as a better tool as compared to orca so for capturing it is good as it will not capture unnecessary files and registry keys and for editing msi ism so for everything i found admin studio as a good for orca you can only uh, create an mst you cannot capture the application but with admin studio uh, we have install shell and repackager we can perform both the work how an install shell looks so admin studio install shell is a part of admin studio so install shell is just part of admin studio and other parts are repackager and act which i already told install shell admin 2.0 is an integrated set of tools for the creation customization and conflict resolution of application deployment package so if you see this particular screenshot of ms install shell you can see that what in all we can create it Okay, so the first is the basic MSI, then is a merge module, then is the patch, then MSI database, MSM database, transform, visual basic, .NET wizard, C, .NET wizard. So this tool is something which is not just used by us as a packager, but it is also used by the developer to create a package. What and all we use as a packager, we use a transform. So that is the way you use transform and you can get a dot mst which is a microsoft windows transform now uh, about the transform what is transform that i'll just uh, tell you in a simple way it is a mirror image of msi so when you see yourself in the mirror you see your replication uh, your reflection in the mirror so same way mst is something you are creating a reflection you are going to add whatever your organization standard is there, whatever is the thing, you are going to add it in the MST. You are not going to add it in the MSI because that is the vendor MSI. Vendor MSI, you cannot modify anything. So you are going to create a transform and that transform, you whatever the modification or customization as per the customer requirement, you can put it there. So as an application packager, if an exe extract msi or if vendor provide msi then we have to create transform with install shell or an orca tool there are several tools for creating transform but most of the organizations are using install shell orca and uh, there is a advanced installer one new tool has come where people are using it that is also a licensed tool only the orca tool is free of cost if I talk about introduction, the install shell is a license tool that helps to create transform for a vendor or an extracted MSI from EXE. Install shell admin 2.0 is an integrated set of tools for the creation, customization, and conflict resolution of application deployment package. 
this project leads you understand how you are going to create transfer and apply company standard with the help of install shield and orca tool also how to implement the silent installation of application so when you are going to create a transform uh, our main work is to make that also silent so this is an added advantage when we are going to do it via admin studio set uh, so that we do not have multiple uh, set of silent keys as we have it in exe for msi we have only one or two silent keys which you can implement it and that is for all the application which you can use it and you can create the uh, silent uh, application of msi mst i'll just read the highlight and then i will bind it up because i think nimu has an office so we will do up to this much only so the highlight says we can create a multiple transform so first of all this is an interview question wherein they ask for particular one msi how you how much mst you can create how much transform you can create so there is an infinite transform you can create it is completely depending upon the application so creating multiple transform as per the customer requirement applying the company standard properties to install the application as per user requirement this company standard i will be explaining you when we will be go, go, going forward with the training so do not worry with that i'll explain each and everything then creating folders and file registry hive as per the need of the application so any application which you are installing that install a file folders registries and shortcuts so that is the main thing which every application does so you can create a new files you can create a new folders you can create a new registry hive shortcut you can create anything you can do it if being a packager then remove desktop shortcut as per standard which i already told you then is advertise or an advertise shortcut as per the requirement this is about the shortcut we have a two types of shortcut which i will be explaining in detail in future there are many things which i have to discuss before this topic because obviously this is a huge topic about the shortcut and all that so as of now just understand that there are two types of shortcut one is advertise and the other is unadvertise this is a msi uh, like this is an install shield in, inside the background of a tool how it looks we have a 80 plus tables in the msi if you see the uh, screenshot in the middle part you would be able to see the tables so for everything we have a table like for files for folders for shortcuts for ini file for component for everything so there are 80 plus tables uh, do not worry we do not have to learn all the 80 plus tables only there are few tables which is important which will be required for all the applications that i will be covering then this is the interface of an orca tool in orca we would be just able to see the tables nothing else we would be able to see it so you see there the tables are same for orca uh, for orca also for install shield also tables are exactly the same just that the interface is different this has a different interface it shows many things in the if you see in the extreme um, left side of my uh, mine is left your will be right so right side there are many such things which you can view in the install shield uh, tool but you would not be able to see it in the orca so that is why uh, the gui interface of the install shield is much easier and much uh, easy to do the packaging this is the repackager thing which i will cover later any questions please go ahead and ask and for today we will bind it up as of now fine once we will move ahead then questions will be there okay so, uh, so shreya uh, can we get these recordings yes you will be getting this recording so once uh, this is done please ask amit and he will be giving you this recording and uh, i will be giving you this text file now itself in the chat you people have to download it and get the recording from amit just ping him whenever he will be free he will be giving you this recording any questions with respect to tool or anything okay i am assuming it as no and if you people find it uh, like little rush or it is going uh, the speed is increasing then please stop me there only i'll get i'll stop there and i'll move little bit slower so 
till the point you people are able to understand grasp the thing take it till that and if you people think that okay it is being over for today just tell me i'll stop it